Hello, in this video, I'll react to Taylor Swift vs. Scooter Braun and why Taylor Swift is re-releasing her music. Before I start the video proper, let me introduce myself. I am Dean Rod Vera. Aside from being a law school dean, I'm also an entertainment lawyer, more particularly a lawyer in copyright law. I have a master's degree in intellectual property from the University of San Francisco. So I think I know what I'm talking about. Also, I've been legal counsel or lawyer to several musicians, such as the bands Razorback, Wolfgang, and Itchy Worms. Let's begin to talk about Taylor Swift. As you know, early this year, Taylor Swift re-released one album that she re-recorded, the album Fearless. By the end of this video, you will know how she did it, and probably you can answer the reason why she did it. First, let's begin the history of Taylor Swift. As you know, Taylor Swift is one of the biggest recording artists we have today, and the mere fact that she's re-releasing an old album created buzz in the recording industry. Back in 2005, Taylor Swift signed with Big Machine Records. It was a recording company that featured country artists. As we know, Taylor Swift started out as a country artist. That contract had a term from 2005 until 2018 when it ended. And in that span, she got to release six albums. Now, when she signed with Big Machine Records, she probably had a smart lawyer that helped her because she actually retained the copyright or ownership of the songs. But as the regular practice in the music industry, the record company usually upfronts the cash to pay for the recording of the album with studio time, distribution, the printing, and the marketing. So in exchange for paying for the studio, recording, distributing, and marketing, Big Machine or the record company will own the masters, but Taylor Swift owns the song. How is that possible? There is a principle in copyright law that there is a distinction between the copyright and the material object. This finds support under U.S. law with 17 U.S. Code Section 202, which states that ownership of a copyright or any of the exclusive rights under a copyright is distinct from the ownership of any material object in which the work is embodied. In the Philippines, the copyright versus the material object finds support. It is found in section 181 of the Intellectual Property Code. What is also common in both the US law and the, uh, the Philippine law is that the sale of each does not affect the other. Meaning if you were to sell the DVD or sell your CD, it does not affect the ownership of the owner of the copyright. What does that mean? I'm sure you have probably a CD or a DVD at home. Now, you may own the DVD or you may own the CD, but you don't own the song or the movie inside that DVD or CD. So let's apply this law towards Taylor Swift. When she signed with Big Machine Records back in 2005, she got to retain ownership or copyright over the songs that she composed, and yet Big Machine owns the recordings or the masters of the albums. So there are six albums. Before her contract ended, I've read that Taylor Swift tried to buy the masters from Big Machine. Big Machine wanted something in return, they, so apparently they didn't come to an agreement. Then, in 2009, the Big Machine record company was acquired by the holding company of Scooter Braun. Scooter Braun is the manager for artists such as Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. Scooter Brown probably got a lot of investors, borrowed a lot of money to buy Big Machine Records for $300 million, reportedly. That means the record company is now owned by Scooter Brown. But in that deal, Scooter Brown actually owned the masters, the video and other material of Taylor Swift. But not the songs, just the masters. Over the last year and a half, Scooter Brown and Taylor Swift couldn't come to an agreement on what to do with the material. Apparently, Taylor Swift did not like the fact that Justin Bieber's manager bought her songs, or at least bought her masters. In October 2020, Scooter Braun sold Taylor Swift's master recordings, artwork, and videos to a company called Shamrock Holdings. But he still retained the other material of Big Machine Records, which holds country artists such as Tim McGraw. So even if it appears that he broke even for the buy and the sale, of Taylor Swift's songs or master recordings, 
he still owns the big machine record company, which has other famous country artists. The sale happened in October 2020. So in November the next month, Taylor Swift started to re-record her songs, starting with Fearless, which was released early this year in 2021. Why did she do that? Well, first, it's to gain control of her songs. So there's now a quagmire that there are two versions of the songs. We all know that Taylor Swift's fans are very loyal. So if Taylor Swift says, listen to my own version or listen to the new versions of my songs on Spotify or iTunes or whatever streaming service there is, those fans will stick to the new recordings. This happens quite a lot in the music industry. As you know, back in the early 80s, Michael Jackson was able to buy or control the songs of the Beatles, even though he had nothing to do with the composing, recording, or writing of those songs. Eventually, Michael Jackson got to sell those to Sony Music Entertainment. There are many instances where artists have lost or cannot gain control back of their songs from the record company that they signed years ago. It's as if they signed a crossroads deal. There are many stories of bands blinded by the recording advance. The contract may say recording contract, but in the end, it's re actually a sale. The artists have sold their songs lock, stock, and barrel to the recording company. It's a good thing that Taylor Swift here, back in 2005, before she signed with Big Machine Records, she was able to negotiate, at least have control or ownership of her songs. Because she can afford it, Taylor Swift re-recorded her songs and she's released or re-released this album fearless under another label let this be a lesson to the artists and bands who are listening here or watching this video when you're gonna sign a recording contract please read the fine print if you need advice please consult a lawyer but make sure that lawyer is well versed in intellectual property or at least copyright law at their requests Razorback and Wolfgang were able to get back control of the songs that they signed off many years ago. And they have re-released the songs, at least a live version of it. Who won here? I would think it's still Taylor Swift because she had the smart thing of retaining copyright over her songs back in 2005 when she first signed with the recording company. The loser here will be Shamrock Holdings, which recently bought Taylor Swift's master recordings. Right now, it will be competing with the new versions of the songs. Hi, please do me a favor and smash that like button. It will help me a lot and it will trigger the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you don't, my dog will eat this exam booklet and that student has to repeat his final exam again.